God bless you. I want you to welcome you to Aberdeen Life and Life Church. Our brother Hugh McMillan's going to be preaching. Amen. He's going to be there this Sunday morning. Amen. Devotional message for us this morning. Let's sing together this morning. Amen. Thank you, my Lord Jesus. Born again, born again. I've been born again. Born again, born again. Just like Jesus said. Child of God, I'm a child of God. That is what I. Who sings your praise? I hunger and I thirst. 
just for your righteousness. It's only found in one place. Now take me in to the holy of holies. Take me in by the blood of a man. Yes, take me in. Amen. We're going to come around the Lord's table. Again, a table of remembrance. Amen. <coughs> For the believer. Amen. It's in 1 Corinthians 11, in verse 23. Amen. Give me a moment to find it. 1 Corinthians 11, and verse 23. And it's Paul the Apostle speaking. This is what he says. He says, For I have received from the Lord, which I also pass on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And the same way after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then, whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner, you will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. A man ought to examine himself before he eats of the bread and drinks of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord, eats and drinks judgment on himself. This is why many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep. But if we would judge ourselves, we would not come under judgment. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we will not be condemned with the world. Amen. Self-examination again this morning. Amen. The Bible says that a man examine himself. You know, we're all good at pointing the fingers, you know, at this person and that person. But the Bible says, let a man, let a woman examine himself. Amen. I think the first examination has got to be that, are you in the faith? Are you a true believer? And the second one is, are you living the life? holy and pleasing to God. Amen. The Bible says that let a man examine himself to see if his, if his lifestyle, amen, backs up what he believes in. Because you can't separate it, can you? If you truly believe in God, if you've truly been saved, you're going to live for God. Amen. And that's the examination of this morning. I'm, you ask yourself the question, am I a true believer this morning? Am I truly walking this morning according to God's word this morning? And that's the examination this morning. Examine yourself this morning. Am I in the faith? You know, 2 Corinthians 13 and verse 5 says, Let a man examine himself to see if he's in the faith. Basically means to see if he is a Christian. Because we are not in a religion. We are in a relationship. And you know, this morning I want to invite every man and every woman this morning to bow their heads and, and give themselves a, an examination this morning. Not to condemn I thank God that Jesus never came to condemn, but to seek and to save that which is lost. He's not here to condemn us. The Bible says it, so you will not be condemned with the world. But it is an examination to see if your life and lifestyle is matching up to what you believe in. So let's take a moment this morning to reflect on what Jesus went through for you and for me. He shed his blood, gave his life, amen, took a beating for us. The Bible says he was buried, put in the ground, and the tomb, and the third day rose again. And I thank God he never left his offense, he left us with the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Bible says that it's a helper. He leads us, he guides us. He's a comforter. So this morning, you can take comfort in us this morning, that God loves you this morning. That Jesus, if you're a true believer, Jesus saved you this morning. And he wants the best for you this morning. So this morning, take this opportunity this morning. Before we take for this table, take this opportunity to say, to say, Lord, forgive me, wash me, cleanse me from my sins, my unrighteousness. Up to this point, Lord, I've failed, I've made mistakes, I've got it wrong. But Lord, I'm willing to change. That's all God's looking for this morning. The willing heart is willing to change. 
and willing to walk in God's ways this morning. Listen, we're not going to be perfect until we go home to be with Him. But you know, this morning, listen, we need to try, amen. We need to set an example for that lost world out there. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm going to take the, the bread and wine this morning. Like the Bible says, you know, the biscuit, the Bible says this morning, you know, that uh, this biscuit represents his body and the juice represents the bloody Jesus. Amen. And I thank God that Jesus gave us on that cross. Amen. He shed his, his blood, his precious blood upon that cross for a sinner such as me, to cleanse me from all my sins and all my unrighteousness and the Holy Spirit to help me through the struggles in my life. God bless you. Thank you, my Lord Jesus. Thank you, my Lord, for that sacrifice, Lord. I'm going to ask my brother Hubie to come up and share God's word with us. Amen. God bless you. but we're blessed to have it in church. This morning I got a, a word and I was praying and I was asking the Lord to give me something, something that would encourage, something that would build up. You know right now, especially this time, we're living on an era where you put on the TV and everything's negative. Everything's negative and it's all doom and gloom. But this morning I want to just reflect on what the Lord has done. You know it's a message, it's a call to bless the Lord and remember of his benefits. Now let's pray. I'd ask that you would pray at home for me, pray not for the word, the word is perfect, but pray for me, pray for the delivery, and pray for yourselves that the Lord would use this message to, to encourage you, amen. Lord God, I come before you in the Lord, and I pray and ask Lord Jesus by your, by your wonderful name, Lord God, that you'd use this message to encourage, use it to uplift, use it to build, Lord God, not to knock down or tear, Lord. But use it, Lord God, just to, to lift the Christian up, Lord God, to, to help them in their walk, Lord God. You know, if we have any blues, Lord God, if we have any sadness in our hearts this morning, yes, I pray and ask that you would encourage us, Lord God. And how do we get encouraged, Lord? By remembering what you've done. So I pray and ask, Lord Jesus, by your wonderful name, that you would use this message for your glory. Amen. You now I want to make a, a quick statement. In all times in our life, good and bad, but in all times in our life, it is good to remember what the Lord God has done for us and the benefits we have in him. Now turn your Bibles with me to the, the book of Psalms, Psalms 103. It's only a small reading, verses 1 and 2. And as you're turning to it, you know, just think about it for a second. How blessed we are in Christ. How blessed we are this morning. You know, and how many benefits we have in the Lord. Just, just give them thanks. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Psalms 103, verse 1 and 2 reads this. Bless the Lord. O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. You know, for a second, it says, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul, bless the Lord. And ask yourself a question. We sing the songs, we sing uh, that song, Lord, bless the Lord, bless your name. But how do we bless the Lord this morning? How do we bless the Lord's heart? How do we fill God's heart with joy? You know, it's simple. By doing exactly what we're doing right now. By coming around the table, by remembering what Jesus has done for us, remembering, uh, uh, just reflecting back on him. You know, we are called to be worshippers, and to worship is just to focus on the Lord God this morning. So what, how do we bless the Lord God? By doing exactly what we're doing. You know, we're not in the building. We're not all in the building coming together, but in our homes, we're taking time to read God's word. We're taking time to listen to his word, to the preaching of his word. And by singing praises to his names like we've already done this morning, by remembering what he has done, by taking to the table, you know, we delight in God's heart this morning. As a parent, I look at it this way. A parent is always filled with joy. He's always blessed when he sees his children giving thanks. You know, I've got three boys and, you know, when I hand them something, a present or something, it's always good to see them, you know, giving thanks back. Not that you do it for the thanks. But you know what, it, when you get a, a, a selfish child who's not interested, it's like just takes it and chucks it in the cupboard, there's another BS. You know, it doesn't fill a, a, a parent's heart with joy. But you know when you see your children expressing joy and thanks and, and come and give me a big cuddle and a kiss, well, it fills a parent with his heart full of joy. 
And when the Bible says, bless the Lord, O my soul, how do we bless the creator of man? How do we bless the creator of this universe? By focusing in on him. Bless his name. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. You know, we're in our homes. Like I said, we're not in the building, so there's a lot of maybe distractions going on this morning. The kids maybe be running crazy. If they're anything like my home, you're trying to chase them from one room to the next, just to get your hands on them. But you know something? Bless the Lord with all that is within me. Simply means focus in on Him. You know, a lot of things could be going on, but put them to one side as we take from this word. And let's focus on His name. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says, and forget not all His benefits. And that's what the message is this morning. It's the benefits that we have, not the benefits that God has. The benefits that we have in knowing the Lord Jesus. The benefit that we have by walking with God. But the benefits we have by being in the right standing with God through Jesus Christ. And you know something, for me that blesses my heart to know that I have so many benefits in the Lord. And this scripture just brings it back to remembrance. You know, let's, let's focus on him. You know, we're going to reflect on a few things that he has done for us. Just to bring back to memory just a few things. I can't fit everything in. No one really could count as many blessings as there is in the Lord. But let's focus in on a few things. Turn your Bibles with me to the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 5. And we're going to be reading verse 17 and verse 18. Give you a second to find it. Amen. Now this is one of the benefits. This is a benefit of a new beginning. A benefit of a fresh start, a benefit of being reconciled, and the benefit of reconciliation. This is the three benefits I would like to look at in these two scriptures. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old things have passed away, behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Here is something to feel blessed about this morning. If you are in Christ, now this is for the born again believer. If you are in Christ, the Bible says you are a new creation. You are the new creation. You're not a remade or a remodeled or a recovered up person. You are a new creation. The old things have passed away. All things are new. And you know something, it makes me think of something very important. Something that the world tries to chase after. And that's a fresh start. You know, I've watched many movies and then movies come to the one plot twist where they're trying to escape from the things they've done. And they try by moving away to a, a different village or a different town and, and they change the name and, and it's all in pursuit of the fresh start. But always in that movie, something from the past comes up with them, catches up with them. Something always catches clean up with them. But the Bible says that you and I are a new creation. Now man may try and cast up things from your past, but you know what a benefit you have in the Lord God this morning. That the Lord God casts everything that you and I have done into the sea of forgetfulness. The moment we turn to his son Jesus Christ. And you know something, for me that's a benefit. That fills me full of joy. Not only this, but we have in verse 18, reconciled. That's me and you, that's the born again believer. We have been reconciled to God through Jesus Christ. You know, that's something you cannot achieve in the world. That's something that you could not put to task and try and achieve on your own merit. But it's the blessings and the benefits we have in the Lord. That, that God has peace with me. See, I was God's enemy and you were God's enemy at one point in life. We lived in sin and brought forth in iniquity. And you know something? The Bible says that we were enemies to God. It brought enmity between man and God. But what through Jesus Christ has done, that relationship has been repaired. The relationship between us and God has been repaired. We are in the right standing this morning before God. No matter what we have done, if we are truly in Christ and, and are born again, we are in the right standing before God this morning. And for me, that is, a, that is one of the biggest benefits because it's not something you can achieve anywhere in the world, but only in Christ. That is a benefit for us. Not only in this, in verse 18, it says this, the, 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 the reconciliation. There is a word at the end of verse 18 says reconciliation. And that means to restore a person to God through leading them to Jesus Christ. So not only are me and you born again believers in the right standing before God with a fresh start, but we can have the gift to lead others to the same. Think about it for a second, for your loved ones that you pray for. You know, you have the words of wisdom to lead them to Jesus Christ and have them have peace with God, but by only leading them to the Lord. And you know something, what a benefit for the born again believer to think this, that, that me, a sinful man, has been forgiven as a fresh start. 
That me, a sinful man, has now been made right by God in the eyes through Jesus Christ. And not only that, that the people that I care about and the people of the world, the lost people, we could lead them to the same, to be in the right standing with God through Jesus Christ. What a benefit to the child of God this morning. What something to fill your heart full of joy. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So the point of scripture I'd like to bring out is this morning we have a new start. Something that you cannot achieve in the world. We have a new life. Something that has been given through Jesus Christ and walking in the Spirit. We have a new eternal destination. Where else could you look for that this morning? Where else could you achieve that this morning? But only by knowing Jesus Christ. And not only that, you have the gift of reconciliation. You have the gift of leading others to the same. You know something? When we stop and pause for a minute and just forget about the negative stuff that's out there, the things in the world and what's going on, we are a blessed people in the Lord. Nothing in Huey and nothing in ourselves. But we are blessed in the Lord Jesus Christ. And let's not forget that benefit this morning. Turn your Bibles with me to the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 1. So that was our past dealt with. We have our past dealt with. We have the benefit of the new start. Thank you Jesus. This talks about the present. Now in the scripture again. You will see the, the words in Christ. But as we read it. It says this therefore. No, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Now we have the benefit of this, being guilty, but being declared not guilty, set free, because Jesus Christ has paid our price. The world does not have that. The world does not have that, but this morning mean you have that. We have the benefit of being declared not guilty, although we are. We are not in the eyes of God through Jesus Christ. The Bible says no condemnation, which means there is no price for us to pay. Jesus has paid the price with his flesh, not with ours. My friend, this morning I want to encourage you in this. The word no condemnation means my flesh doesn't have to pay for the wrong things that I have done and may do. My flesh doesn't have to pay. There is no penance for me to pay this morning. There's no part of me to walk and add 50-50. It's not by works and by faith, but it's by faith in Jesus Christ. So this morning we have no condemnation. The child of God has no condemnation, which means you'll be brought to no judgment. The flesh will not be judged through Jesus Christ. When God looks at us, he doesn't see us. He doesn't see our past, but he sees Christ for those who are in Christ. The Bible says, in Jesus Christ, meaning a real living, walking relationship with the Lord. You know, there's people, and I don't want to name drop, but there's people who are in a religion. People who maybe hold to statues. People whose religion is in a dusty Bible they've never ever read. But don't touch it, don't go near it. But we don't have that. You know, what tells me that we do not have a religion is this. We are not in the building as a church gathered together. But all across the world we are coming together and taking a part in the breaking of bread from our homes. You know, that, that is not a religion. That is a relationship with Jesus Christ. Thank you Lord God. Amen. There is this... Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Now in my notes, not that they count for anything, but I've got a big flash and sign saying warning. Because God is not mocked. He knows who walks in the flesh and who walks in the Spirit. Now for the person that's maybe went far from the Lord. A person who's maybe been caught for that sin that easily entangles us. Because we are flesh and blood. Alex said it, we're not perfect. And you know what? Getting caught for sin just seems to draw us away from our relationship with the Lord. So this morning I would say if you're finding yourself further back into the world, turn to him this morning, bow your head and pray and ask him to come into your life to be restored in Jesus' name. The Bible has put out a little point to me. All mankind is guilty, guilty of sin and is on death row. But Jesus has paid our price and those who accept him as Lord and Saviour will be set free. You know this morning what a, what a what an encouragement piece of information to take from the study of the Word of God. That this morning, no matter what we've done, and no matter where we are, we can come and bow ourselves before Him and say, Lord God, forgive me. If I'm distant from you, Lord God, restore me. And you know something? There will no be judge on your, your flesh, what you have to pay. But through grace and mercy of Jesus Christ, we can be restored this morning. And I thank you, Jesus, for this. You know, when I look at our present as well. What the benefit we have in our present. Turn with me to the book of John. John chapter 14. And we're going to be reading verses 15 to 18. Now we're going to be here for a little bit of time. So just bear with me. 
You know, if you're finding it hard to keep up, just pause the video and turn your scripture there. The Bible says in the book of John, chapter 14, verses 15 to 18, If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, but neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans, I will come to you. Praise the Lord. This is a benefit we have again this morning. Something to thank the Lord God again for this morning. And that is the Holy Spirit, the helper. You know, the, the, the born again believer, for me and for you, we have the benefit of having the Holy Spirit lead us and guide us in our life. So what a benefit to have. The, now Jesus gives a few names, two different names to the Holy Spirit in this piece of scripture, 16 and 17. In verse 16, he says, I will give you. And this is a promise to those who follow Jesus. This is a promise to you this morning. Acts 2, 39 says, For the promise is to you and your children and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord God shall call. And this is the, the benefit, the gift of the Holy Spirit. And for you and me this morning, we have this within us. Not just with us, but within us. We have the Spirit of God. So what a benefit we have this morning. And Jesus gives them two names. In verse 16, he calls them the Helper. I will send you another Helper. I will give you another helper. Now, to look at that for a second, the word helper in Greek is parakletos. Now, a little bit of information, but what it means is called alongside. Called alongside to so the Holy Spirit. He is our helper, our guideline teacher. He helps man to walk in the will of God. You know, this morning, that, that fills my heart with joy. This morning, that fills me with joy just reflecting on the benefits I have in the Lord. That I have the Holy Spirit to help me, and you have the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us through our life. Hallelujah, Jesus, the one who is called alongside. You know, in the physical, we can think of someone who comes to our rescue. We can think of being stuck at the side of the road. We can think of maybe being broken down. And how thankful are you when someone comes alongside you and helps you? Well, remember this this morning. We have the Holy Spirit through our life who helps us, leads us, and guides us, and guards us. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your holy name. That he may abide with you forever. See, the helper, the thing about the Holy Spirit will never leave us when we remain in Christ. The last couple of scriptures we've been looking at, it's all about remaining in Christ. In Christ, in Christ. And in this morning we are in Christ Jesus. We have a relationship with the Lord. And we have received this Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The second name in verse 17, the Spirit of Truth. Another name for the Holy Spirit. See, the thing about the Holy Spirit, the benefit we have in the Holy Spirit is He will never lie to us. He will never lead us astray. But he teaches us the word of God by the word of God and how to apply the word of God by walking out in our lives. You know, what, what a benefit to have this morning, to have someone with us who, who leads us and teaches us and who loves us and guides us. You know, I don't know about you, but when I think about it, I feel blessed remembering what the Lord has done. I feel blessed counting the benefits I have in the Lord Jesus because you can't find us in the world. This is only for you and I this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Whom the world cannot receive. The world does not see him nor know him because they haven't received Jesus Christ as the Lord and Saviour. But for us, we have. You know, we have a benefit this morning of the Holy Spirit who leads us. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your holy name. Thank you, Lord. And verse 17 says this, and it reminds us for ourselves here. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Hallelujah, Jesus. What a, what a benefit for the child of God this morning. What the benefit we have? Do you feel blessed this morning to know that you have all these benefits in the Lord? You don't have any of these things in the world. The world cannot offer you nothing like this. Not, not, not one can the world offer you. But Jesus Christ has given us so many blessings just to, to, to sing praises to his holy name. And this is only just about a few. You know, a month of Sundays could not cover the blessings we have in the Lord. But I don't want to. It fills my heart with joy to know that I have the helper. So we're blessed with a fresh start. Everything we've ever done, cast into the sea of forgetfulness. We're blessed for being forgiven and being declared, declared not guilty. Although we have done many wrongs and have done many wrongs, we are in God's eyes. He doesn't see us in our dirty past. But what he sees, he sees Jesus Christ and what he has done. Thank you, Lord. And having the help of the Holy Spirit. So this morning, our past we have benefits in. Our present we have benefits in. And I thank you, Jesus. You know, during Jesus' earthly ministry, 
just for a second, during at Jesus' earthly ministry, because he's speaking to his disciples here. You know, he guided his disciples. He guarded his disciples. He taught his disciples. And now the Holy Spirit for you and me this morning does the exact same thing. And I thank God for that this morning. I thank you for that gift. Praise your name. Not only that, I want to look at the verse 18, a future. We have a benefit in the future. It says this, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. I will not leave you as orphans. No, we are not left alone this morning. We have the Lord Jesus that loves us and cares for us and has given us the Holy Spirit and all these benefits in him. The Bible says, I will come to you. And we believe in the imminent return of Christ. That means at any time, the Lord can come back. And what a benefit to those who are standing, waiting and watching to be caught up with the Lord. Now, what, a, what a benefit that is this morning. You know, I want to turn back to my, to my first scripture. Because we have all these benefits in the Lord. But I want to turn back to the first scripture. And it's in Psalms 103. And it says this, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. You know, when David, Bible scholars, placed the, the writing of this psalm around the same time in 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 20. And you know something, it's, it's, a, it's a sad story. It's a sad story because David had fallen into sin. And David had this child and he was praying for this child. And, and you know something, because of sin, this child's life was demanded. But you see, David is praying and, he, and, he, and he's, he, he's fasting. But yet, he, the baby's life is taken. And what happens is, David doesn't run into the wilderness screaming and kicking and, and shouting and cursing. He doesn't do that. The second he hears the news, he gets up, and he washes himself, anoints himself, and heads into the Lord's house and just begins to worship the Lord. And you know this morning, if David could go through all these things, David knew what it was to be a shepherd boy, to have very little, to be in the favour of the king, then to have the king's position, and then through sin to be chased into the wilderness, just to reclaim it through repentance once again. So David knew all these things. He reminds his people to bless the Lord and forget all his benefits. Thank you, Jesus. You know, the conclusion to this message is this. This morning, let's keep in our heart the benefits of knowing the Lord and walking with him. Because nowhere, nowhere in the world can you receive these benefits of walking with the Lord God. And whatever you're facing this morning, whatever you're going through, maybe you've got hard situations you're facing, maybe your heart's a bit downcast. You know, remember this, Hebrews 12 and 2, look unto Jesus. And please keep in your heart Psalms 103. Forget not all these benefits. You know, I hope this blesses you. And we take a second and pray and I pray and ask that the, the Lord would, would bless the, the word that it would retain. And that we could continue to walk in him and count our joy and count our blessings. Lord God, I come before you, Lord God. And I pray and ask that this message, Lord, is encouraged, Lord God. And I pray and ask, Lord God, that it's uplifted the Christian. And Lord Jesus, we pray and ask, Lord God, that you use it for your glory and for your benefit. In your most holy and precious name. Thank you, Jesus. God bless.